Now in question 1, part A, we're given two particles, P and Q, with masses of 0.4 kilograms and 0.6 kilograms, respectively. Originally, the two particles were stationary, so on my diagram, I'm going to just put an arrow there, saying that that was moving at 0 meters per second, and the same with this one. Okay. Now, P was given an impulse, and whenever I draw impulses on diagrams, I do it with an open arrow, something like that. And it was given an impulse of 3 newton seconds. And the question asks us to find out the speed that it will move away with. Well, it's clearly going to move off in that direction, and I'm going to label that V. Okay, so it's going to be moving off in that direction at V meters per second. Now, to calculate V, I'm going to need to use the impulse equation. An impulse, just as a reminder, is equal to the change in momentum of an object. A momentum is mass times velocity. So the change in momentum will be the mass times the final velocity minus the mass times the initial velocity. Now, impulse is a vector quantity, just like velocities are, so we need to associate a plus direction. And I'm going to associate the direction to the right as being plus. So that means that my impulse of 3 newton seconds, okay, is in the plus direction, so that will be 3. We'll put it there for 3 equals the mass, which we know is 0.4 kilograms, that's 0.4, times the final velocity, which is what we're trying to find, so that's V, minus the mass, which is again 0.4, times the initial velocity, which was 0. So clearly, if you work this out, you've therefore got that 3 equals 0.4 V, because this term is simply zero, and so the final velocity of p is given by 3 divided by 0 0.4, and 3 divided by 0 0.4 gives a final value of 7.5 meters per second, then moving to the right. Now in part B, we've got that P is now moving at 7.5 meters per second after the impulse, and it's heading towards the stationary Q. So P bumps into Q, and after that collision, we're told that Q moves off in with a uh, velocity of 5 meters per second in that direction. And we've got to find out the final velocity of P. So I'm going to label that VP. And that would be VP meters per second. And to do this, what we've got to do is use the conservation of linear momentum. And the conservation of linear momentum, let's just put it down here, by the conservation of linear momentum. I'll abbreviate it, OK? Conservation of linear momentum momentum. What we have is that the momentum before impact, okay, that's of P and Q, is equal to the momentum after impact. Now momentum then is mass times velocity. And you've got to be careful again in questions like this to make sure that you have a plus direction because you're dealing with vector quantities. And I'm going to take movement to the right as being positive. So, the momentum before impact, okay, let's look at P. P has a mass of 0.4, and it's initially moving with 7.5 meters per second to the right, so it's in the positive direction. Then plus the mass of Q, which is 0.6, multiplied by its initial velocity, which, in fact, it was stationary, so that's zero. 
equals now the momentum after impact. Well, P has a mass of 0 0.4 and is moving with a velocity of VP, so that's going to be 0 0.4 VP. And Q has a mass of 0 0.6 and it's moving with a velocity of 5 units to the right. So everything stays positive in this particular example. So therefore, working this out, 0 0.4 times 7.5 comes to 3, and 0 0.6 times 0 is 0, so we just have 3 on the left-hand side. And on the right, 0 0.4 times Vp, we just leave that alone, and 0 0.6 times 5 is 3. Subtracting 3 from both sides gives 0 equals 0 0.4 Vp. And so therefore, if I divide both sides by 0 0.4, clearly the velocity of P is equal to 0. And that's what we had to show. We had to show that P was brought to rest after the collision. Okay, so we can just say, therefore, P is brought to rest. Okay, and that should be enough to satisfy the examiners, I hope, on a question like this. And that brings us anyway to the end of number one.